Quran. Then next week, inshallah, if God permits and rules, we'll begin with tafsir. Next week, what we'll do, inshallah, we'll look at the word tafsir, the terminology tafsir, and different between tafsir and ta'wil, and different types of tafsir we have in the world. So that when you take hold of every Quran, even if it is in English, you are able to tell what type of tafsir is it. Is it tafsir on history? Is it tafsir on literature? Is it tafsir on mysticism? You should be able to know. So inshallah, next week, we'll start looking at that. And then inshallah, the upper week will begin with our tafsir, inshallah. We're going to conclude with the science of Quran tonight. And if you remember very well, right from the beginning, I made mention of a very, very important point, which I'm sure you can remember. So when you take Quran like this, you look at Quran from two different dimensions. Number one, you look at Ulum al-Quran, that is the science of Quran, which we've been doing ever since we started. And then number two, you look at Tafsir al-Quran, the exegesis of Quran, exegesis of Quran. That's Tafsir. So we have Ulum, we have Tafsir. These are two different things altogether. But as I said, the introduction is the science of Quran. And then followed by the exegesis of Quran. If you know science of Quran, when you enter tafsir, the rest are sure. 30 to 40 percent, you've understood it. The rest will just be giving the meaning according to the teachings of Imams. And if you remember, during the discussions of the science of Quran, we discussed so many things. We began by looking at the word Quran on its own. What does it mean? And then we went on to look at the first verse and the first chapters to be revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we looked at the last chapter and the last verse to be revealed by Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We went ahead to discuss about the naming of each and every chapter of Quran. Why these names? Some names I told you is the names of animals. And I told you why and how. Some names are not the names of animals. They are the names of events. Because of the importance of that, importance of that, importance of that event, Allah or Rasulullah will name that chapter after that. And we went ahead to discuss the revelation of Quran, different types of revelation, if you remember very well. And then after the revelation of Quran, we look at the clear and the unclear, which we did the last time we met. The clear, why we have clear verses, why we have unclear verses. Tonight, inshallah, we're going to look at one very, very important aspect of the science of Quran. We did so many things of the science of Quran. That is the distortion of Quran. Tahriful Quran. This is very, very important. I'll just break the ice and touch base for you to understand what distortion of Quran is all about. This is what they call Tahriful Quran. Very important discussion. Distortion of Quran. So the question that follows is, is Quran distorted or not? That's the question we need to ask. Is Quran distorted or altered or not? That's the question. So now this word distortion in Arabic they say it's tahrif. You need to know the terminology. <laughs> tahrif of Quran. Because there are those who are of the view that Quran is being distorted. Within Shias and within Sunnis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some feeble and weak minded scholars who are of the view that Quran is being distorted. Some said it's not complete. Some said something is added. Some said something is omitted. Some said letter, word, verse. So let us look at it, inshallah. You know, when we talk of distortion, as I mentioned, it's alteration. Is it altered or is not altered? And when I talk of alteration, it could be something omitted from it or something added to it. And it's a very, very important concept. In fact, there are Sunnis, unfortunately, not all of them. There are those group who are of the view that according to Shia's Quran is not complete. 
So therefore, when they discuss the question of the distortion of Quran, they label the lovers and the followers of Ahl al-Bayt that Shias are of the view that Quran is not complete. The complete Quran, Quran will be brought by Mahdi alayhi salatu So when they hear the must have Ali, must have Fatima, must have Mahdi, to them we are saying that different Quran will come during the appearance of the Imam. And to them, this Quran, they are claiming that she has claimed. But unfortunately, we don't have that claim completely. And you will see. When we talk of distortion, brothers and sisters, we look at it from two different dimensions. Verbally and conceptually. Very, very important. So here we have verbal distortion and you have conceptual distortion. Verbal is what they call lefzi. You just have to know the terminology. Taharifun lefzi. And then this one conception, they call it taharifun ma'nawiyan. we very, very important. You hear them playing with these terminologies when they write books. Say, no, this is taharifun lefzi. Some will tell you this is taharifun ma'nawi. So now let us look at it. When we talk of distortion of Quran, we are looking at two things here. We are looking at verbal distortion and conceptual distortion. Now, let us see. When we talk, I begin with the conceptual distortion of the concepts. Distortion of the concepts. You see, here, when we say distortion of the concept, what do they mean by it in Olom al Quran? They mean the distortion of a term, terminology. I'll give an example. So distortion of the concept, example, distortion of a term. Terminology in Quran. So this term means this, it doesn't mean this. That is conceptual distortion. Example, the word wali. I'll give a typical example. The word wali. In Quran, 5 verse 55. Chapter Ma'ida, verse 55. You check it for me, come on. Chapter 5, verse 55. It's a very common and known verse by all the lovers and the followers of al Bayt. Because it has to do with the wilaya of Amir al Mu'minin. In Nama Wali Yukumullah, Wa Rasuluhu, Wa Ladina Amanu, Ladina Yukimun al Salah, Wa Yutun al Zakat, Wa Hum Rakimah. What is the meaning of Allah? Only Allah is your Wali and His Apostle. And those who believe, those who keep a prayer and pay the poor rate while they bow. Asanto. So now you see this translator is using the word wali. But here, there are a lot of arguments between the Shias and the Sunnis as to what is the meaning of the word wali. Therefore, this is a typical example of conceptual distortion. Whereby the meaning, according to the Shias, of course, based on the teachings of A'imma alayhi salatu was salam and Rasulullah. That the meaning of the word wali means the authority. The one in authority. That is the meaning of the word wali. So if the verse said your wali is Allah, it means the one who has the authority over you is Allah. But not only Allah, then said wa rasul, we bring wa there, that's why we add the conjunction. It means that power and the authority of Allah, Allah has transferred it to Rasulullah. Because people are too limited. They cannot acclimatize within the nur of Allah. So therefore Rasulullah can help them to get acclimatized to the nur of Allah. And then that walia, wilaya of Rasulullah is transferred to the wilaya of Imam Amir al mumin So therefore according to Shia, we said the meaning of the word wali is authority. Yeah, yeah no, that's, I'm coming there, I'm coming there. That's where the majority of Muslims are. This, that's why they call it distortion. So, well, Shia, we said, is authority. But now, when you go to majority of Muslims, they said no. 
the meaning of the word wali here is friend or kadi but kadi here we still make it authority no problem but authority not the way they put it like even a leader of the country is wali president is wali we have to have seen it like that but here we said no it's only authority given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore why we said there is distortion here there is distortion because the meaning of the term is distorted. You have to take note of it. It's very important. Conceptual distortion, we agreed, is there in Quran. Sunnatan wa shi'atan. The meaning is being changed. So when someone talks about distortion, it's a number one distortion, distortion of concepts. So here, they distorted the meaning of the word wali. Instead of it being qadi or authority, they make it to mean friend. So they said, Allah is saying, I am your friend. <laughs> and prophet is your friend. And those who give sadaqah while they are in ruku, they are your friend. So she has said, no, 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 no. Allah cannot just bring everybody and tell you, I am your friend. <laughs> So therefore, here we said there is distortion without any argument and without a shadow of doubt. Second example of conceptual distortion. So therefore, here, where is the distortion? Distort, distorting the meaning of wali, you see, to be friend, friend only. So they said it's friend. Here we say no, it has been distorted. Why is distorted? Because that's not what Rasulullah taught. And that's what that's not what Al al Bayt taught. That's number one example. Let's look at second example, very important example. So therefore, distortion of a term or no, distortion of an application of an ayah. So first example, distortion of a term. Number two, distorting. The application of a verse is also another conceptual distortion. So sometimes a term is distorted, but sometimes a term is not distorted. The application of a particular verse, if the right application is supposed to be that, then they said the application is that, then it's distorted. Which example? Check for me ch chapter 2, verse 207. Example, I hope you are taking note of it. Example, chapter 2, Quran 2, verse 207. This is another typical example of conceptual distortion of Quran. English, eh? Yes, English. In the Lahaj, uh, okay, right, this is the English, no problem. And among men yeah. is he who sells himself uh -huh. to seek the pleasure of Allah. Uh -huh. And Allah is affectionate to the servant. You look at the verse. I want you really to look at this verse. Among men, there are those they sell themselves in seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa Here, who knew the meaning of this verse? Was revealed on Imam Ali on the night of uh, Maharaj. No, ah. no, not Maharaj, sorry. Uh, Mabit. Yeah. Mabit. Um, yeah. When Rasul was yeah. 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 So he, he, he slept on the bed of the yeah. Prophet. So this is the Shia version. That this verse, 2207, is revealed on the right of Amir al Mu'mini when Prophet was embarking on his hijrah. He asked Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, to sleep where he used to sleep. Because the Quraysh plotted and planned to kill Rasulullah several times. So through the wahi and the revelation of Allah, you go, allow your brother or your cousin to be there. So when Amir al muminin accepted the calling of Rasulullah and he did that, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala revealed this verse. Because Imam knew they were going to kill Rasulullah. Me and you will think a million times before we would sleep there. But Imam Amir al Mudafar, among men who sell themselves, why? They are seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't want anything. So, therefore, here, according to us, of course, based on the teachings of Al al Bayt, we have a lot of rewire on that. 
this verse was revealed in the haq and the right of Imam Amir al -Mumin. Yeah? Question. Yeah. This verse was revealed uh, in the haq of Imam Yeah. But is it applicable to us? Of course, it's a modern bit of way that applicable. No, no. Not in believing. In what? But in life. Yeah. Yes, of course. There is no way I have to do anything for the sake of Allah. Whatever I do, whether you praise me or not, I should not bother. I have to do it seeking the pleasure of Allah. In other words, this verse is teaching us the spirit of sacrifice for the sake of Allah. If Imam Amir al muminin he knew that he was going to die. He knew these people, they were going to chop me off into pieces. Because now they were targeting Rasulullah. But look at how Allah placed fear into their heart. They did not die. So therefore, it's very, very important, Mama. The same example is like the ayah of Inama nuta'imukum li wajihillah. La nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. We feed you for the sake of Allah. We neither expect reward nor thanksgiving from you. Today, me and you, we are not like that. Huh? I will expect you to thank me. If you don't thank me, I get angry. Why is not even being grateful? You know, this person is not grateful. Whatever you do to him is not grateful. But this is the, the, the place. al Bayt, they sacrifice, and they said, we have sacrificed for the sake of Allah. So now you look at this verse. This verse, brothers and sisters, according to us, based on the teachings of our Imams and Rasulullah, which we have our own proof, it is revealed concerning Imam Amir al but why am I saying it is distorted? Verbally, the ayah is not distorted. Likewise, in the first place, the word wali, the verbal distortion is not there because the word is still the wali. How Allah revealed wali is there. But only the term is changed, the meaning is changed. Here also, the application of the ayah is changed. This is in the views of the majority of Muslims. That this verse is not revealed in the haq and the right of Imam Amir al You know what he said? I want you to listen to this anyway. And you have to take note of this anyway. And that is the reason why we say it is a conceptual distortion. They said, According to the Riwaya, Muawiyah, the son of Abu Sufyan, asked Sumara bin Jundub to write like a narration or Riwaya to say this verse was revealed in the Hakk of Ibn Muljim. Ibn Muljim. You all know who is Ibn Muljim. Ibn Muljim was the one who killed Imam Amir. So now look at how this happened after the departure of Rasulullah from this world. Therefore, according to Shia, according to our teachings of Jafari, conceptual distortion is there in Quran. No doubt about it. Most of our differences is as a result of conceptual distortion. This word means this. Somebody will come and tell me this word means this. This ayah is revealed in the right of Imam Ali. Somebody will come and tell me this ayah is revealed in the right of this personality. So therefore, conceptual distortion, we agreed. It is there available in Quran without a shadow of doubt. Now, the point is on verbal distortion. We said verbal distortion is impossible to happen in Quran. It cannot happen, and I'm going to explain. Conceptual, fine. We don't have any problem. When I talk of verbal distortion, what are we talking about? You change the structure of the ayah. You replace a term with another term. You add another verse, <coughs> you add another chapter, one chapter is omitted, we said no. 
it never happened and it will never happen and will go to reasons. So therefore, the, the, the distortion which we agree it happened is conceptual distortion, which now today is causing a lot of problems between the Ummah. Someone will come and tell you he is a Khalifa of the Ummah because he see one verse of Quran. All this barbaric act that you see in the world is as a result of this. They take the same Quran, but because of lack of proper understanding of the verse of Quran, they say, no, you need a Khalifa. Now you will misquote in Quran completely and it's denting the image of this beautiful religion which is given to us by Allah subhanahu It's very, very important. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, let us try to understand the Quran. I promise you, if you understand the Quran, you are the most free personality wherever you find yourself. And I promise you, whoever wants to stop you and ask you a question, why Muslim this? If you understand the Quran properly, you are able to explain to the person, be it Muslim or non-Muslim, atheist, whoever, if you really understand Quran properly, you are able to explain. Therefore, we are said you have to take Quran leman khuti babihi to the from the one whom Allah addressed Quran to. You don't just take Quran from anyone. So therefore, let's go. Verbal distortion. Number one, we said I just make a blend. Quran is not distorted verbally and will give many reasons. Quran is not distorted verbally. Ha one. Check for me Quran fifteen verse nine. Quran fifteen verse nine. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu ah. What does Allah say? Surely we have sent down the reminder and we will most surely be its guardian. Okay. So now if some Muslims they claim that no Quran is distorted, then you are questioning the credibility of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are questioning the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means Allah, He promised, but His promise is like my promise and your promise. So therefore all the arguments I'm going to bring now will be based on this particular verse of Quran. Yeah. What if someone says that also this verse has been added? It's not a big deal. How do you argue? That? We go to the compilation of Quran. They bring their compiling, we bring our compiling. Because if you say Quran, this verse is added, you have to be able to prove to me also it's added. You don't just tell me it's added. <laughs> the, way, the same thing if I tell you it's not added, I don't just say it's not added, I have to be able to give you a proof. Uh -huh. Therefore we study the clear and unclear verses. Therefore we study, I don't know, uh, abrogation and not abrogated. Therefore we study all these things, they come together to complement the whole thing. So therefore if someone, like for example, in some many years ago there were people in the West, I don't know whether it's in America or where, who came up with their own Quran. These are not Muslims, really. And if you read it, you realize that this is not Quran. <coughs> so therefore, Quran is not the story, and I'm going to explain now, you will see. Number one, based on this verse A, it is the fulfillment of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So number one, it is what? Fulfillment of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever I send down, I will protect it. Or else Allah, why you should promise and he doesn't fulfill the promise? Then it's a waste. So therefore, number one point based on this verse, it is a fulfillment of the promise of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I promise and I will safeguard it. That's number one point. B, very, very important. You look at the history of Quran. I will explain to you how. History of Quran. I will explain to you how. Now you see, when you look at Quran right from its revelation up until today, it has been everything for Muslims. Because you see, the problem is those who said distortion, they are not non Muslims. It's Muslims who are claiming distortion of Quran, unfortunately. Non Muslims, they've got nothing to do with Quran. Those who claim Quran is being distorted, they are non Muslims. So therefore, when you look at Quran, 
right from the first day Allah started revealing unto Rasulullah, up until today, it has been everything for Muslims, irrespective of their sect, irrespective of whether Sunni or Shia. In your daily prayers is Quran. You don't do anything. And one thing to tell you that under this system, Quran has not been distorted. Many people today know Quran by heart, including children. Including children. If it is distorted, then it can cause a lot of confusion along the line. But right from the beginning up until today, the miracle is such that all those who memorize during that time and today, when you bring it, it is the same. It has never been different that that time when they were memorizing, they were memorizing something else. And today, they are memorizing some people. The world also must open their eyes, man. It's not easy six month old, six year old child, four year old child memorizing this whole book. It's not a joke, man. Today we have three years babies who are memorizing almost the whole Quran. Go to Iran and see. Go to other Arab countries and see. So therefore, what I'm trying to say under the history is that ever since the beginning of the revelation up until today, Quran has been everything for Muslims. They refer to it now and then until today. The next point, ah, which is a very important point for me, is the scribes of revelation, which we explained some time ago about the scribes of revelation. This also, when you look at it, is a point to say this book cannot be distorted verbally. Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his family, never appointed ever Tom, Dick, and Jerry to become a scribe of revelation. He appointed between 14 to 43 people, which we, we, we discuss about it, if you remember very well, for them to take note of everything. So this is one point to tell you that, no, so long as Prophet had appointed some people to take note with the compilation, it means this Quran cannot be distorted anymore. That, from that time, there has never been anyone who's, who, who can claim to be a scribe of Quran between Sunni and Shia. After Rasulullah, there has never been any scribe of Quran anymore because revelation stopped completely. And also, the simplest argument is here. Allah promised that Quran is a book of guidance. Quran, yeah. Oh. Allah promised that Quran is a book of guidance. That's number four, number B point. Hope. If it's a book of guidance and it's distorted, how does it guide them? That is confusion. Allah said it's a book of guidance. Okay, fine. Sunni said it's a book of guidance. But the same person will come and tell you, Shia, you are of the view that Quran is distorted. This is not the Quran you believe in, what we believe in. I said, okay, yalla. He said, Hudan lil muttaqi. It is guidance for the believers, or muttaqi. So if a Quran is a book of guidance and Quran is being distorted, how does it guide? It confuses them. In actual sense, it confuses because something that guide cannot be altered now and then. If it is altered and it is not complete, then how does it guide? Then it becomes a problem. And of course, Allah also promised to fulfill his mercy on people through this Quran. So how does he fulfill that mercy if Quran is distorted and Quran is not complex? Therefore, according to the teachings of our scholars, we have so many requires. This book is complex. In terms of writing, in terms of wording, the way Allah revealed to Rasulullah, it is still intact and it will remain intact until the day of Qiyamah. Compared to any other scripture, as we'll see the, 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 the comparison between Quran and the Bible. That is the last point I want to do. You realize that this book is preserved right from that time. Because he promised, Wa inna lahu la hafizu. So there is nothing you can do. Today, if you come to me and you bring me the current Bible, I'm not talking of the Bible which was given to Moses and Isa. These are something else. I salute, they are correct guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you bring me the current one, which is in the hand of people, which has been used today, I can show you a lot of distortion in it. And I can give you proof. One concept can be said in three 
different versions altogether. We have it there. But you bring me this book, Quran al Karim, and show me you try. Many people they try to say there are contradictions. Now, Uzbillah, come, I'll show you there is no any contradiction here. There is no place where Quran will say one and say that one is two in another place. So, therefore, this book, Allah preserved it and He protected it. Of course, in the world of Riwayat, Baba, we have a lot of Riwayat traditions from al -Bayt. So many traditions. One common tradition you all know, Taraktu Fikum al Thakalain. Kitab Allah wa Itrati Ahl Bayt. Who can use this Riwayat to explain to me that Quran is not distorted? Who can answer this question? I live. Two weighty things for you, isn't it? Yeah. The book of Allah and Ahl al -Bayt. This is one of our proof when we come to Muslim, we want to use Zuhayi Bukhari and Muslim to bring this riwayah from them and tell you Quran is not distorted. So if you want to tell me Shias are more stronger than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we are able to add and reduce something from Quran, who can use this riwayah to show me that Quran is not distorted? Yalla, Akhwan. If it was distorted, it cannot be a guidance for you. cannot say that I'm living this way to think. Yes, I understand it's a guidance. But now, how do you use this rewire, which is a slogan in the mouth of every lover and the follower of Al al -Bata. Every Shia, when he makes argument, the first thing he could say, do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the book of Al. Okay, Yalla, Ikhwan, you are inside. Now. Well, the Quran verbally is not distorted, which could yeah. confirm. Yeah. It's only a conceptual yeah. This meaning has changed. So how do you use this rewire? Which? The rewire of I leave two way okay. teachings for you. Oh. The book of Allah and how do you, okay? Oh. The Prophet has uh, mentioned that he has left the book. So it must be complete in that. Okay. Still. Yalla Habibi. Second part of the hadith that they will come back to me on the Day of Judgment. So how do you use it to so prove? That means that if he leaves the two weighty things and they come back to him in the way he left it. So it means it was... Okay, that's a good same. point. That's a good point, but I need more. That's a very good point. Definitely, it's a lay of tariqa hatta yarida alayy al -hawd. Quran and Ahl al -Bayt will never be separated until at the fountain of Kawthar, until the day of Qiyamah. Yeah. So definitely, since the day of Qiyamah, even Rasulullah will be there, he will want to see Quran the way he left the Quran with Ummah. Good point. But there is another point also. Now. Every fi'al of no. Ahl al-Bayt reflects no. according to the Holy Quran. Okay. So they both are synchronized. Ah. Yeah. You see, the point is here. Whereby we believe Ahl al-Bayt are still alive. We believe Imam al-Zaman is alive. And in fact, if anyone, anyone, whether Sunni or Shia come to you and say, no, 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 Imam Zaman is not yet born. Don't go to that Eliwaya, he said, he born Imam. No, no, no. Rasulullah said, Lay yaftarika. Learn this word, learn, it means forever and ever. It means right from the time of Rasulullah until the day of Qiyamah. So the, there must be someone there to preserve Quran. So therefore, these two riwayah, riwayah we used to say, no, no. Al al bayt their role is to preserve Quran. So now and then they are with the Quran. He said, I live with you. It means these two things will continue to be with you until you meet me on the day of Qiyamah. It will be with you. Because the Tarak to Arabic is a Tarak to I live it with you. So since I live it with you, until at the fountain of Qadr, it means these two things have to continue to be with you. If I'm not there, or else what is the use of the wire? If it is only for the sake of Qiyamah, Rasulullah will ask Allah, take it, close it in a box, Inshallah will meet on the day of Qiyamah. But because you know after him, things would happen. There will be conceptual distortion. People will have their own tafsir out of their own whim and selfish <coughs> interest and desire. Therefore, these two things are there. So my point is here, whereby, if they will be there, the Al al Bayt and Quran will never be separated, then they will make sure they preserve Quran. And that is one of the duty of the Imam of our time. Therefore, we say when we celebrate Eid al Qadir, what are we celebrating? We are celebrating the protection of the interpretation of Quran by Rasulullah. So, therefore, it's very, very important you use this riwaya to defend the protection of Quran. 
That is number one rewire. Number two rewire, you have a question? Yeah. Oh. Is this about these two things in the, the election? Yeah, it's the only place you can find. Kabisa. In fact, you know, we have two rewires close to one another. One of them said, I leave two edit things for you. The book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah. And the other one is this one. But this one, book of Allah and al Bayt, outnumbered this one, the book of Allah, and Sunnah of Rasulullah. Because if you say the book of Allah and the Sunnah, okay, now book cannot talk, Sunnah cannot talk. Who teach who? Who teach who? Who guide who? Who direct who? So here, still, when we interpret this, what we say Sunnah, what is Sunnah? Sunnah means prophet. Sunnah means prophet. Because we said sayings of the prophet, actions of the prophet, and silence approval of the prophet. This is what Sunnah is all about. When somebody tells you Sunnah, Sunnah doesn't mean Hadith alone. It's the entire lifestyle of Rasulullah. Sayings, silence, approval. Somebody doing something, he kept quiet. He never said anything. He never said haram. It means it's approved. You can do it also. Even if it is for a single day, like joining Salah. Yes, he didn't do it a lot, like the way he separated. But he did even less assume it was only once. It's a hujah on me to do because it's Sunnah. So therefore, definitely, the ayah ay is from the Bahari, Muslim, and them, you find all these in Wahya today. So another riwayah, which is from Imam Ali Salah, Imam Jafar Sadiq. Imam said, every narration and riwayah that will come to you, use Quran as a measure. If it goes hand in hand with Quran, accept it. And if it goes against Quran, throw it on a wall. So from here we, real, we, we understand it's so easy that this book is preserved. And because people can fabricate hadith, hadith can be manufactured easily. There is no problem. But Quran, wallah, you cannot manufacture Quran. It's such a miracle that even if a person is tops in his Arabic understanding, he cannot fabricate this book. This is one book that cannot be fabricated completely. It has to remain the way it is. So therefore, this riwayah from Imam Jafar alayhi salatu salam is also highlighting that, look, Quran is preserved. And no one can temper with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last reason is, of course, when you compare Quran and Bible, when you compare Quran and Bible, you do a little bit of studies. You then re you realize that Quran is protected and preserved. And a Torah and Injil, unfortunately, people temper with it. For instance, I'll give you an example. You look at the concept of the year after in a Torah, for instance. Just give you an example. In the Torah, Torah of Musa Alayhi Today, when you read the Old Testament, because Old Testament is the book of Musa, which is brought together, Old New. New is a old Musa together Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. Now, if you look at the concept of your after, you'll find nothing in it. It's completely ignored. As if Musa never discussed about hereafter. Torah is silent. I'm talking of the current Torah. I'm not talking of the Torah which was brought by Musa. I just want to try to show you that something is wrong somewhere. But that's when you go to Quran. Quran 6, verse 154. Check this verse for me. Quran is saying the Torah of Musa is sent for the sake of hereafter. Read that verse for me. Quran 6, verse 154. Again, yeah. we gave the book to Musa to complete on him 
who would do good to others mm -hmm. and making plain all things and a guidance and a mercy yeah. so that they should believe in the meeting of their Lord. Ah, here after Kiyama, but I, I give you a challenge, go and make your own research on Torah. Old Testament, the new one, and you come and tell me. Quran is not lying. Quran is completing both Torah and Injil. That's why we said Rasulullah is a seal of prophethood. It's not a joke. We believe in Musa, we believe in Isa, we believe in Ibrahim. But this one coming to complement the work of the other. Therefore, we said why Quran is so miracle. Because <clears throat> Quran is composed of all the books brought by the other prophets and the book of Rasulullah. So therefore, yes, Quran is telling us about the hereafter. But when you go to the Torah of today, we find nothing. Completely nothing. You don't find anything in that book. Therefore, we said there is a problem in this book. And it has to be solved. The same thing when you check the Bible of today. On the history of prophets. Is a Bible and history of prophets. We are talking of the current one, which has been distorted, unfortunately. You realize that when they discuss about the prophets, it's all negative. You read Bible and see, you will cry. <laughs> Prophets are described to be humanizers. Excuse my word. You know, in different ways, you will cry. But when you come to Quran, look at how Quran describes Musa, how Quran describes Isa, how Quran describes Lut. So from this, as a law, this book is intact. But the current Bible is not like that. <laughs> Completely is not like that. The same thing look at Bible and the creation of women, which I mentioned in one of my Bibles. Genesis 2, verse 21 to 24 or 25. Yes, I'm not wrong. Genesis 2. 21 to 24 or 25, yeah. He said women are created from the rib of man. This thing is only from the Bible. But we said this is not the Bible Isa and Musa brought. But you check Quran for verse 1. 4 verse 1. Quran said, no, no, we are all created from one single self and one single self. So therefore, it tells you this book, Genesis 2, verse 21 to 24, 25. So therefore, this book, we said, is intact. There is no problem about this book. Allah preserved it and he protected it because he wants the truth to prevail over. Therefore, if Christians, they are true Christians, they should open up. You found it? Yeah. yeah. No, no, Bible, I did Bible studies. <laughs> they should open up for Quran. If a genuine Christian come forward and open up for Quran, I will tell you, it will be difficult for him not to accept Prophet Muhammad. Really. Just take Quran. Look at how Allah described Isa. That tells you this is indeed a true book. There is no doubt in this book. The same thing if the Judaism Jewish will take their time and read the history of Ali Imran, for instance, which is talking about Musa and his family, and Nazi'ah, those other verses of Quran. Definitely it will help them to realize that not Quran, uh, Islam, is a universal religion. It's not just a religion. It's a universal religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Send for Makkah. Lastly, I want you to check this verse for me, Kamar Abbas. Check Quran 6, verse 41 to 43. Eh, no, it's 
And he it is who produces gardens. Okay. Trellis and untrellised. And palms and seed produce of which the fruits are of various sorts. Yeah. And olives and pomegranates like and unlike. Yeah. Eat of its fruits when it bears fruit. And pay the due on it on the day of its reaping. And do not act extravagantly. Yeah. Surely he does not love the extravagant. Okay. And of the cattle he yeah. created yeah. beasts of burden yeah. and those which are fit for slaughter only. Yeah. Eat of what Allah has given you and do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. Yeah. Surely he is your open enemy. Good for the three. Eight in pairs, two of sheep and two of goats say, Has he forbidden the two males or the two females or that which the wombs of the two females contain? Inform me with knowledge if you are truthful. Yeah. You see this verse of Quran. This is a very important verse of Quran. Which when you go to Bible, both old and new, there are discussions of this nature. Almost similar. I forgot the verse, I, I want to remember, but I forgot the verse in the Bible. To tell you that no, this Quran is really a true book. There are many things in the Bible also that are exactly fine in Quran. This one I wanted just to show you how this book is true because not everything which is in the current Bible it check it out. There are things that it approves it also to tell you that no, this book is not only for those who are Muslims. It is for all those who were alive right from the time of Prophet Muhammad until the day of Qiyamah. So inshallah from next week, inshallah, we're going to start with the main business. Next week we will look at what is the meaning of the word tafsir. What is the meaning of the word ta'wil? Because ta'wil, you know, Shias, we love ta'wil so much. So we need to understand what is ta'wil. What are examples of ta'wil? And then we look at different types of tafsir. We have so many types of tafsir. Then we we'll look at which tafsir we are allowed to do and which tafsir we are not allowed to do. Once we finish that, then we start with the chapters of Quran. And as I told you, we are not going to do tafsir tartibi. Tafsir tartibi means tafsir in order. We are going to do tafsir in our view, I think. Tafsir based on topics, you know? So we take a very important, for instance, Ayat al-Kursi example. But as I said, we'll begin with those verses more to do with Ahl al-Bayt, alayhi salatu We need to understand what are the viewpoint of the Sunnis and what are the viewpoint of the Shia. Why do Shias stand by this point? Why and how? So we need to be convinced because I tell you, when you argue with anyone, if it is based on Quran, you are clear. Because at least he can come and tell you, man, this Rawi, the reporter, is also <laughs> modernist, man. He's a liar. Therefore, you see, Hadith, you, 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 you study so many things in Hadith, you can't believe brothers and sisters. In Hadith, you have to, now they've got how many types of Hadith you have to study. You have to study the life of the reporter of the hadith. You are not only study only the life, you have to study the content of that hadith. Does it fit in? Does it fit in? But Quran, nobody study about who is reporting the Quran. And who's writing oh, yeah. the Quran. Everybody <laughs> believes, yes, they may argue meaning, meaning, but that's not a big thing. So therefore, it's very, very important that our argument should be based on Quran. Once you base your argument on Quran, then there is no problem. Everybody will accept it and they will go and digest it and they will come back to you. The reason why some of us we get stuck because you want to quote that book, that book, go Quran. Everything is in Quran. Man. They said if you understand Al Al Bayt, you will see them in each and every verse of Quran. But it's because you, know, you said, I left two things with the Quran and Al Bayt. So Al Al Bayt and Quran are like this. But today, who are serious with Quran and who are not serious with Quran? So we need to understand. If you have a question, you ask. If you don't have, we make dua and go home, inshallah. Yeah, done. Now. So, Molana, 